So I picked up this cheap Hantec CC650 amp clamp the other day. Let's see if it's any good for automotive use. Okay, pretty good there. So we're really going to put this thing through its paces. First of all, we're just going to measure the current draw from the battery by turning on the ignition. Then we're going to measure the current draw from an ignition coil. After that, an injector. And then stick around till the end where we put it through the ultimate test to measure the battery current draw. So I've been looking for an amp clamp for my uh, Pico 2204A. And uh, as you might guess, I've bought this. I like doing things cheap and ran into this Hantec CC650 amp clamp. It was around £70. So links to all this kit can be found in the description below and you can see me using it all for automotive diagnostics. So make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with my latest uploads. But for the money I thought I had to give it a go. Um, it had the two settings on there so it's got the one millivolt per one amp and it's also got the one millivolt per 100 milliamps. We've got the zero button on there so that needs to be pressed before you connect it up to any circuits and it also takes a small 9 volt battery that's put into the back there. All we do then is just open the jaws and put it around the cable you want to connect to. One thing I don't notice on this clamp that I have seen on the Pico clamps is a direction of current flow. Um, now it's not majorly important um, because if it goes the wrong way all you do is switch the clamp around but it would be nice to know before you uh, connect it up especially if you're trying to connect it in quite an awkward area. Other than that, not a lot to say. Let's get it on the car and see what it can do. So connected up and ready to go. What we're going to do, stick it on one millivolt, one amp first. Make sure we zero the clamp. So we can see there, look, it takes a few presses to get it zeroed. I think when the clamp goes away from zero, it's called drift. So put it around there. Not reading anything yet. Let's go and turn the ignition on and see what happens. So I'm just going to set it to a longer recording mode. Let's go to two seconds per division. Okay, so we'll turn the ignition on. Okay, so we've got an increase there. Let's uh, maybe like turn the fans on or something. Just open the door, close the door there. Let's put the fans on. We have an increase there. We'll go up a bit more. Okay, pretty good there. And now we've actually turned the vehicle off and we should be able to see it go to sleep as well. Although we're not reading very much there, maybe like one millivolt. And you wouldn't expect that for a um, quiescent current draw. Yeah, in this setting it's definitely not suitable for measuring battery current drain. So let's pause it, go back and have a look at what we've got. Okay, I'm pretty impressed with that, it's pretty good. So I haven't set it up as a probe, so what you're going to have to do is just convert it. It's really not going to be very difficult. So one millivolt equals one amp. Quite a simple conversion. So we can use the cursor there to drag it down. There we are, so six millivolts here. Then it dropped down to three millivolts or three amps, and then it came back up again. We can see there when we turn things on, had an increase in current. It's pretty good. So let's connect it up around the ignition coil and see what we get. Right so you can see there look we've took the clamp off and we're measuring minus four millivolts. So if you're looking for an accurate reading you need to make sure that you zero the clamp, press it a couple of times there. So around the ignition coil, I'm going to increase the time now to, oh, let's say, five milliseconds. I'm going to set a trigger, auto, 
and I'm going to bring that just above there. Okay, so I've set it now to the one millivolt per one for 100 milliamps. You can see there how far it's drifted out, and that takes quite a bit more to get it in line. Connect it up. So we've set the auto trigger there and getting a bit of a mixture of patterns. Yeah, I think that's the one we're looking for. So it's a bit erratic, it's picking up some different things and it's giving us some different readings there but I think what we can see there is our primary charging, current increasing and then the big collapse of the coil there. Let's try the injector. Okay, it's a bit difficult to trigger to the injector because of the noise from the ignition coil, but we can see it there, look. So we're looking at this bit here. It's not as accurate as we might want it to be, but we're certainly getting a current reading. You see the drift of the clamp has just gone way out already, look, minus 10. So on that setting, it really does drift quite quickly. And I generally find for most applications when you get the amp clamp out on an engine what you're really looking for is a difference between readings so for example on the injectors if you thought there was a problem you might check all three injectors and look for a difference so it doesn't actually matter too much where the line is you're just looking at the relative amp draw between the different components so we can see here this is starting down at minus 10 and it's going up to around three so 13 millivolts so 1300 milliamps which sounds about right for an injector so yeah look in that short time already you can see how far it's drifted it's now at minus 30 it was at minus 10 only 15 seconds ago and that may be just the physics of what we're trying to do with this amp clamp so it is a 650 amp amp clamp and we're actually using it to measure really quite low current so i don't think you can complain really so for that reason i really wouldn't recommend it for for measuring a uh, battery current drain however let's just see what we do get so let's go on let's go on five second divisions We have got a read in there. Just pulled the key out, that's what the spike was. Let's see what happens. So we could see the current going down there a bit, but you know, look, the scope's, but the clamp's drifted even further now to minus 30, so you really can't get an accurate reading although it will measure that amount of current, although there's a lot of noise on it. So you're probably better off spending a bit more money on something a little bit more accurate. If you're looking for a current clamp to play around with every now and then, check out the link and go and grab yourself one. Also check out this video where you can see me use it to do a relative compression check. Look at that. We also put a fault on the engine to see if it can pick it up.